Hello everyone, welcome to Code and Boots. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the topic, how to host a public website or API from a computer in your home. Okay, so uh, for as, as any, uh, maybe like a student or a, uh, or a computer science developer, so we'll be working on APIs or uh, developing websites, uh, developing applications, etc. Okay, so during the initial phases, like we may not have the infrastructure on cloud or uh, maybe like a hosting service to host it uh, to the public. Okay, so public means to the internet. Okay, so let's say if you have a computer at home uh, with an internet connection or or a, you can even host it within a Raspberry Pi, like a small device like Raspberry Pi as well. So you don't have to uh, spend money uh, on the hosting provider or on the cloud service provider. So maybe during the initial days uh, of, or maybe like let's say you're building a startup. So during the initial days, you can host it in your computer itself. So I'll explain how, how to host it uh, from your Com computer so in very simple steps okay so with whatever you have we can host it so the the prerequisite is we need an internet okay so uh, by default i mean most of your service provider will be providing you a dynamic ip that means every time you turn off uh, your router uh, or modem the ip will change okay but you can request a static ip from the service provider some providers will charge uh, uh, some amount for the static ip some providers give it give it for free okay but you can experiment this even without static ip as well Le let's say like i mean you, you if you uh, keep the router without any reboot right so your ip will be the same okay so for me right now i don't have a static ip i have only dynamic ip but i'm not going to change the router okay it is on forever okay so then we need a computer or uh, a raspberry pi or a small device or computer to host your application okay third thing is you need the uh, we need the admin access to the router or modem console this is to configure the port forwarding then the last item is we need a domain name right because we need a friendly name uh, to host our application okay so this is the minimum requirement and with this we can host it in few minutes okay so first is we need to deploy the application and api application or api in the computer okay second uh, yeah so let's do that so i have uh, uh, a computer with me so this is basically a vm uh, created in my computer so what i have is i have a small uh, a box in my in my home so box means basically like a small pc and i use it as like i mean my research box okay so whatever i do all those i mean i host it there deploy there i install linux in that machine and i do all the experiments from there okay so <coughs> so this is my box so here i have installed ubuntu and i have nginx as well i'm not going to explain you nginx configurations or anything so uh, i have already explained it in my previous videos watch my previ previous videos to get more understanding of nginx and nginx configuration virtual host everything okay so i have uh, an, an nginx running if you see service nginx restart status you can see an nginx is running over here okay and next part what we need is we need to do so i'll get into the deployment part uh, after explaining the port forwarding okay so as i explained we need the uh, access to the admin console of uh, our router this is basically for doing port forwarding let me explain port forwarding in detail so that you will get to you will get an idea of what we are trying to do okay so let's say you have internet connection okay so every internet connection will have a public ip okay so the nature of this ip might be static or dynamic dynamic means it changes whenever you turn off the router and turn it on but static means it will stay forever okay so this experiment you can do even if you don't have a static ip because uh, the, the dynamic ip will last for a period of time okay it won't change uh, like every second or every minute or anything so it usually stays if you keep it on okay so if it will change only whenever you reboot okay so here let's say this is the the ip address of your router okay so in the router we can configure port mapping so in the router what happens is there are the in the modem you have devices devices means like say your mobile phone your computer uh, maybe your tv okay another mobile phone all those are connected to your wi-fi or uh, to the lan okay so what you will be doing is and within this behind the router what you have is basically a local network 
okay mostly the local network ip ranges will be in the one uh, series of 192.168 or 10 dot or 172 dot some some local ip network some local network will be there okay with a local ip range so what we are doing is we are doing a mapping of this public ip with a port and the same port to a computer within the local network let's say if i am saying any request coming to the port 443 of the public network okay it should route to 192.168.1.3443 that means the request will get translated forwarded to the specific device let's say i configure something like uh, for 80 i need to route it to this machine okay that means it will go to this machine okay let's say for uh, 3306 i have a database i wanted to forward it to another machine i can configure a rule that forwards to another machine okay so this is how port forwarding or port mapping works so in every router okay so this is what we do in case of like i'm in the cloud as well okay every data center everywhere uh, the way it gets mapped is using this technique the only thing is in your home router this configuration might be like a simple thing in case of like data center and all we will have firewalls and then we control it through nat rules okay so there it will be like a very very advanced configuration where we can control so many aspects related to that okay in your home router it might be like a very simple configuration but uh, till date whatever routers or modems I have seen this configuration is there okay so majority of the routers or modems will have this port mapping or port forwarding configuration so, so this is a basic configuration which is available everywhere okay so what I'll do is I'll show the configuration page of my uh, router okay so this is I have a Vodafone connection and uh, this is my uh, page okay so admin console you see uh, this usually will be available so when you uh, do IP config right so how to get this routers uh, console is basically we just do IP uh, sorry IP config IP config you will see the gateway address default gateway right so usually this ui will be available in the gateway address okay it's a broadband connection so 192.168.1.1 i typed and i got my router console and in my router console there is uh, two settings okay one is the basic mode expert mode so the basic mode doesn't have this configuration expert mode whatever configuration i am looking for is available in the expert mode part and as you can see this is my router and behind this i have five devices connected over uh, wi-fi okay ethernet i have not connected anything okay so i have five devices behind this so whatever i am going uh, looking for is below this particular internet so under the internet settings okay so we have something called uh, ipv4 port mapping okay so some in some routers it will be shown as like uh, port forwarding okay in some places it is port mapping so you search for port mapping or port forwarding so once you click on that you will see static port mapping or static port forwarding so there you need to add the port port forwarding you can add several numbers some so there will be some restriction in this kind of devices in the number of port forwarding rules that you can keep so i have added two port forwarding rules so one is uh, to the local ip address 192.168.1.12 so that is basically this vm's ip address okay if you see i have ip config okay so the vm's ip address is 192.168 this is the ip address 192.168.1.12 okay so any request coming in port 443 this is the public port okay we can even do uh, different port between public and private okay let's say public port is 443 i can keep maybe 1443 as the local port okay so we can do the mapping based on your interest so in my case what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep 443 public and local okay so in this local host in this local server local port 443 is mapped to the public port 443 what is public port so if you just click on what's my ip the site you will see the public ip of your network okay so from any device any device connected to your same network you if you try this you will see the same public ip okay it's going to be the same so in that particular ip port 443 this particular uh, machines whatever is exposed over 443 right it will be available that's the rule same thing with 80 as well okay so what i'll do is 
I have my nginx let's let me prepare some web content okay so I have uh, this is my document root of my site I have uh, an index.html so this is uh, welcome to elegant site coders home website elegant page this can be an API as well so let's prepare the configuration for this conf.d CP or MV. Home site. So I'm going to give the name home site. Okay, home site dot coder and boot com. That is what I'm going to give. And in this server name, what I have to do is I have to give the domain name. So I'm going to give home site dot coder in boots dot com. So what we need to do is we need to create a domain name. Okay, we need to do a DNS mapping in our DNS service provider, right? So how we will do? So if you go to the DNS management page, okay, if you go to the DNS management page, uh, if you go to the DNS management page, uh, you will see uh, most say you will uh, go to the DNS section and under that you will see an option to add record. Okay, so they are create an A record. Okay, so and the record value is basically the host is home site. Okay, you give home site and the value you give the IP address of your uh, home. Okay, so in my case, I mean the IP address is different. I just put some number IP address over here. This is just some random number, but ensure I mean it is of type A record and whatever name whatever subdomain you wanted to create you create it here let's say if you wanted to keep it in the parent domain itself let's say coder and boot itself then you use at the rate okay at the rate means it will be using the at the rate and type a it will give simply coder and boots.com or whatever domain you have right you can keep creating uh, records using this i'm using squarespace as the uh, domain uh, uh, registrar but you can use like i mean Euron. so there are like i mean uh, godaddy uh, several other service providers are there so in all the service providers you will see similar options okay the dns management will be something similar so i have created already mapped my domain okay home site.coderandboots.com so now what we'll do is uh, in the nginx server name i have given homesite.coderandboots.com okay i have my web content which is present in the site app now what i will do is let's verify the configuration nginx hyphen t okay configuration is okay service restart i restarted now let's get into the browser okay now let's see home site dot dot com okay uh, home site dot coder and boots dot com the mapping is there but not found right let's see why it is not found okay so site app it's there site app index dot html is there now in the home site let's see what else is missing here location oh there is a problem here okay then so i just used one of my existing configuration to make this adjustment so we need to clean it up Okay, so we need to clean it up. I'm just doing the cleanup right now. So listen 80, listen 80. Okay. Listen 80 and this site index HTML add header everything default 80 all these let's verify hyphen T this is just nginx configuration related thing so this oh sorry reload 
now let's see what happens yeah now you see welcome to elegant coder site so this is this you can open it from anywhere so but after this video i'll change this ip so you won't be able to access it but uh, what you can see is at the moment you can access you can open this uh, website from anywhere in the world because this is publicly available okay now you see there is a problem connection is not secure right let's fix this because it doesn't have https and it doesn't have a certificate so for that we need certboard okay certboard is already installed in this you can install it using snapd okay i'm using ubuntu so that certboard ex installation steps i have already explained in another video so now what i'll do is certboard hyphen and have an nginx okay so i'm going to install the certificate for this so it's going to give me the option yeah so what we need is i need the certificate for home site right i'm going to click enter 3 so it's asking which site you which domain you need to generate the certificate so i'm generating the certificate so it is a requesting certificate it is generating so this certificate will be valid for three months so it is generated now nginx reload so what it will do is it will update the configuration also so whatever configuration file it has right so in that it will make the necessary configuration changes that means i mean it will add the pointers to the certificate locations okay virtual host it will update the port to 443 it will also do the redirect from 80 to 443 all these the certboard will take care okay and also it has the capability to take care of the re renewal of the certificate as well okay now let's refresh it again now you see the security warning has gone connection is secure right now okay that means our website is available so right now for example i just use the static html thing but instead of the static html you can put a nice website behind this or an angular based or react based app okay so it's up to you you can host things behind okay and another thing let's say if you wanted to if you want to uh, bring an api behind this okay api uh, that also i'll show you cd nginx conf dot d um, so home site right so here let's add an api so i've already added a location location to slash api and it points to an api which is running in my laptop okay so this is a simple flask api and it points to that port proxy pass to that particular local one right so let's see whether that is accessible code on home site dot code and boards dot com slash api okay see success status and it is uh, let's clear this logs and see whether the hit is happening or not hit it again see hit is happening right so it is coming here okay so that means whatever api hosted in my home computer now it is accessible from the public okay so in this way as students or as like i mean budding developers uh, uh, or hobbyist you can host uh, or expose applications hosted in your home to the internet okay so you don't have to pay anything you just need to keep your computer on for uh, throughout the time just to ensure like i mean the site is up i hope this example is useful so uh, if you have any questions or feedback about this video please feel free to comment below this video i'll definitely re respond back uh, and also please subscribe this channel for more interesting videos uh, i'll be posting interesting videos like i mean every every uh, week okay uh, thank you thank you for watching this video